Yeah. So thank you very much to the organizers for invite, inviting me to this conference to give this talk. It's a pleasure to come here and give, uh, present my work. So now it has been a long day. So if I was in the audience, I might have liked to skip my own talk. But <laughs> since, <laughs> since still I can see lots of uh, but still, I see lots of people around. So, thank you in advance. So, this is my last talk. <laughs> the talk is over. <laughs> but anyway, so let's go ahead and see yeah. what. Yeah, pardon. <laughs> so, I think this talk looks like I am. I, I shall be talking about something about conjugacy classes in these groups. But there is a geometric motivation behind this study. That's the classical result by Fricke and Vogt. So this result is an incremental result in the development of Teichmuller theory, for example. So the result says that you take any non-elementary two-generator subgroup of SL2R, or more generally, SL2C, then they are determined up to conjugacy by the traces of the generators and their product. And this theorem actually gives you the length parameters of the French aliens and coordinates on the Tetzmuller space. Now, this theorem gen holds more generally for polystable pairs, and I will briefly describe what are they. Now, as I have mentioned, that this result is incremental in giving French aliens and type coordinates on the, te on the Tetzmuller space. And I will say briefly that there have been some generalization of this result in some groups to give Penchel Nielsen type coordinate on more general geometric spaces. Now, in general, we can ask to generalize this result in a purely group theoretic sense for other groups. Now, the question can be reformulated in terms of representation of free group of two generator into a given group. That means we want to find out the minimal generating set for the character variety of free group of two generators into a given group G of your choice. But G should be, I mean, nice, geometric. I mean, it should come from a geometric motivation. I mean, one can ask this question also for fundamental group. I mean, for finite groups as well. But that's a different story altogether. I mean, I would not get into that. Now, there have been some work uh, for finding minimal set of generators when the target group is the special linear group over the complex numbers. Now, there are works by Florentino, Lawton, Sikora, and Zensky, who has got some progress in this direction. Now, in this talk, our interest is the case when n equal to 4, and this case is related to the complex hyperbolic geometry in dimension 3. So my main motivation on this problem was to give penchel nielsen type coordinate on the representation space of fundamental group of a surface into SU31. Now in geometric terms, if we can give such coordinate, that will give us some insight about the topology of complex hyperbolic quasi fuchsian spaces in dimension 3. Now, so this talk is related to two aspects. One is the special linear group of 4 by 4 matrices over the complex numbers. And the other is character variety of SU31, which is related to complex hyperbolic geometry. So I shall briefly describe the complex hyperbolic space. I am sure, I mean, John has described it in the last week. But let me quickly recall it. So you take a vector space of signature of dimension n plus i. I'm sorry. I mean, there is a typo here. OK. <laughs> so I mean, you can uh, replace 4 by n. I mean, so we start with a complex vector space equipped with the Hermitian form of signature n comma 1. Then there are these three sets. Again, I have restricted to n equal to 3. The set of all negative vectors, uh, you can say, I mean, vectors of negative length positive length and zero length. And then the complex hyperbolic space is the projectivization of the negative length vectors. 
and its boundary can be identified with the 2n minus 1 dimensional sphere and the complex hyperbolic space can be identified with the 2n dimensional disk. I, I am sure John have described all this. So excuse my typos in this slide. Now the isometric group of the complex hyperbolic space of dimension n is SU n comma 1, which is the, I mean, which is a group that satisfy, you can, so. GL where you can take this matrix. So in linear algebraic terms, this group AC1, comma 1 is given by elements from GL n plus 1C, which satisfy this relation. And we are assuming that they have determinant 1, so that's the group AC1, comma 1. Now, as in the real hyperbolic geometry, there is a fixed point classification for isometries of the complex hyperbolic space as well. And isometry is called elliptic if it has, a, it has a fixed point on the complex hyperbolic space. It is hyperbolic if it fixes exactly two points on the boundary. And it is parabolic if it fixes exactly one point on the boundary. Now, in the morning, Pierre described one result by Goldman which classifies these isometries using some polynomial function. Now, with Parker and Prasad, we have generalized Goldman's result for ACU P, Q, where P, Q are arbitrary uh, number. And as a special case, we have given a complete algebraic classification for ACU 3, 1. That is the group of our interest in this talk. So the result Pierre Describe in the morning, we have a generalization for that result in SU31. I would not get into the detail of that result because that will, that will not be used here. But now, let me give some background on what do I mean by a character variety, which is the main focus of this talk. So you start with a finitely generated group with relations R and generator gamma 1 up to gamma R. And take a connected Lie group, G. Now, the set of all homomorphisms from gamma into G naturally sits inside R copy, I mean, Cartesian product of R copies of G. And this embedding is given by this evaluation map. You map rho onto its images, rho, uh, images under the generators. Then, Hom gamma G inherits the subspace topology. So here subspace topology, by subspace topology I mean the topology of the Lie group. So I am considering G as a Lie group. So it is a smooth differentiable manifold and it has a natural topology, Euclidean topology you can think of. So here I am, we are giving Hom gamma G the subspace topology from G to the power R. And then I define another subset of home gamma G, that is the subset of all elements in home gamma G whose conjugation orbit is closed. Such points whose conjugation orbits are closed in home gamma G are called polystable points. So by polystable representations, I mean what has been written here. That means the conjugation orbit is closed. So the theorem of Fricke and Vogt is actually holds for any polystable representations of F2 into SL2C. And we define the G character variety of gamma to be the conjugation orbit space, home star gamma G mod G. That means you take the, yeah? No, there is no restriction. No. I mean, several means the conjugation orbit is closed. So there is no, I mean, it's a, I mean, if you take parabolic. Yeah, then. Yes. So, 
right. Loxodromic or even if you take elliptic, I think, yeah, that will be close. So essentially, we are taking semi-simple representations. I mean, for if you take the representations to be semi-simple, I think it will be always uh, conjugation orbit will be closed. Yeah. Okay. So by character variety, we mean the orbits of the polystable. Uh, I mean, conjugate. I mean, orbits under the polystable representations. All right. Now, in this talk, our interest is when gamma is the free group of two generators and G is SL4C or SU31. Now, there are some known results about the character variety of uh, any arbitrary finitely generated group gamma into a Lie group G. So when G is a complex reductive affine algebraic group, then home gamma G is a affine variety. That means it's a that means it's a subset of C to the power n for some n with some polynomial uh, relations on it. So the poly polynomial relations are obtained just by cutting out the product variety G to the power R by the words which represent the relations in the finitely generated group gamma. Now, it's a theorem by Florentino and Lawton, and also it is implicit in a previous work by Luna, that the character variety is homeomorphic to the geometric points of the geometric invariant theoretic quotient. So now, here, there are several things involved in this statement. So here, we are considering the character variety with respect to the subspace topology coming from the Lie group or, or the Euclidean topology. I mean, when you take G as a affine variety, there is a Euclidean topology on it. So we are taking chi gamma G with respect to that topology. And the geometric invariant theoretic quotient is by definition is the set of all prime ideals in this coordinate ring. Now, given any variety V, the coordinate ring is given by the underlying polynomial ring modulo the ideal that defines the variety. So here, This is, the, this is the coordinate ring of the variety. Uh, yeah, of, of this variety. Which, and the GIT quotient is the set of all prime ideals of this coordinate ring. And by geometric, so generally in geometric invariant theory, this set has the Zariski topology on it. But since it has an affine variety structure, there is a natural Euclidean topology that is coming from the affine space, C to the power n. Now here, instead of the Zariski topology, they have considered the Euclidean topology. And with respect to that topology, this character variety is homeomorphic to this GIT quotient. Now, there is, they, they have further proved that the GIT quotient with this topology is homotopic to this non house drop quotient space, home gamma G mod G. So there is no restriction about polystability here. So in general, this, this space may not be nice. This may be, I mean, mostly this is non house drop. But it is proved that this character variety is actually homotopic to this space under the Euclidean topology. Now, let me briefly recall what are the ring of invariants from invariant theory. So you start with a free non-commutative monoid generated by R symbols, x1 from x, xr. And let mr plus be the monoid 
generated by matrices, R matrices, which are matrices in R n square determinants. Now, there is a subjection from the free monoid FR plus onto the free monoid generated by these matrices, the natural projection map. Now, if we take any word W in this matrix monoid, then it will be an image of a word in FR plus under this map. Now, suppose this norm be the function that takes a cyclically reduced word onto its word length. That means you just take a cyclical, cyclically reduced word, mod maps the word onto its word length. Then it's a classical result by process E that the ring of invariance of this coordinate ring is generated by the traces of the matrices. And this is the result that is sort of a weak generalization of the result of Fricke and Vogt in some sense. But we will come, come back to it later. Now, note that here, that the, here the ring of invariance, we are taking the group GL, the general linear group. Actually, it is the Lie algebra of the general linear group. And SLNC acts on product of R copies of this group. But actually, there is a natural map, that is the determinant map. Using that, we can actually see that the coordinate ring of the character variety is equal to the coordinate ring of the coordinate ring over this group, which is a special linear group which is a group of our interest. And this is essentially coming from the fact that the determinant, determinant is a conjugacy invariant of a matrix, I mean, of, of this uh, polynomial ring, I would say. And th this is how it, it has been obtained. So essentially, you mod out this coordinate ring by the determinant, and you can say that because, and because the characteristic polynomial allows the determinant to be written in terms of the traces, it follows that the character, the coordinate ring of the character variety is also generated by the same traces that is in processes theorem. So now we will use some notations and I will show you one diagram that has been heavily used to obtain the minimal parameters for the character variety in the case when n equal to 3. So you take, you, you construct this matrix xk star, which is essentially the, sorry, cofactor of the matrix SK, xk. So cofactor means you just chop out the jth row and ith column and multiply it by minus 1 to the power i plus j. So this is that matrix. And write MR star with a monoid generated by x1, x2, xr, and these elements, x1 star, x2 star, and xr star. Now, you have another mono, mono and I mean, this monoid has a normal submonoid generated by the determinant of these matrices here. Using that, you define this set, which is the quotient of the previous monoid by NR. Now, as you can see, I mean, it's easy to see that in this quotient, xk star will be actually equal to xk inverse. And naturally, this, this MR will be a group that has been obtained from that monoid. Now, let C, M, R denote the group algebra with respect to C. Now, since you have matrix addition and scalar multiplication, it will give you a group algebra structure. And correspondingly 
to the monoid A mod star, you have another group algebra obtained in the same way. Now, this is a diagram that relates these non-commutative group algebras to the character variety and why they are important in finding the minimal generating set of the character variety. Now, this diagram is, you can see it in Lawton's thesis and he actually used this relationship. So, so there is this natural projection map from this monoid to the free group of R generators and from this group algebra to the group algebra over the group MR. And then there is this natural projection map and this diagram commutes. And then using process E, you can have a trace function that maps this group algebra onto the coordinate ring of the character variety. So you can, if you want to obtain minimal generating set here, you can use this non-commutative diagram in order to do some combinatorial manipulation to obtain the desired minimality. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So FR plus means the, I say you, the monoid generated by R symbols, X1 to XR. Where is that? Yeah, here, right? Yeah. So this is the free non commutative monoid generated by the symbols X1 up to XR. And MR plus means the free non I mean, non commutative of course, monoid generated by R matrices. And the R matrices you can choose like with R n square variables. But these are monoid, they are not groups. Now, if we want to make them group, we have to chop them by the determinant function, and that will give you the group. Okay? All right. All right. So, this is the relationship that, that is implicit implicit in our work as well. But I would just describe what is the theorem of Lawton. I mean, Pierre has described it in the beginning, uh, in the morning, I think. So you take any representations, polystable representations of F2 into SL3C, then that is generated by these traces. So you take trace of X, trace of Y, trace of XY inverse, X inverse, Y inverse. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these eight traces, they determine a polystable pair completely into the, in the character variety of a free group of two generator into SL3C. XY is missing, you think? Yeah, maybe, I mean. But I have XY inverse here. No, this is an asymmetric generator. Yeah, but I think this is what is written in Lawton's thesis, perhaps. Maybe I have to check. No, I think this is correct. No, I think the, the approach E we used, you got a symmetric generator, right? X, Y, and, but I have, oh, yeah, yeah. So I have X inverse, Y inverse. But you need one, two, three, four, five, nine. Yeah, maybe I am missing X, Y here, right? Because, yeah. But anyway, I mean, the point is that using this result, Pierre and uh, he mentioned in his paper that independently when has proved this theorem that you take any pair of elements in this character variety, then they are generated by these five traces. And John has described one relation among these five traces in one of, oh, Pierre has, who? Pierre, okay, has described one relation. So this is a nice result in the sense because these five traces gives you 10 dimensions. And one relation, one complex relation, right, that reduce two dimension. So this character variety any element here is parameterized by 
eight-dimensional parameters. So that's very nice, an ideal situation, just like the classical Tejmula theory. Now, Parker and Platis proved it. Yeah, yeah. Say it again. No, these results include the trace parameters which are needed to classify a pair of elements in this character variety. But they does not give any relation. The relation you have to find out separately. But in this case, Yeah, if you know these traces, that's what. Yeah, so. So here, John and Lattice, they proved a special case of this result using a different method. That method says that, I mean, I think this is more explicit what Caroline is asking. You take a pair of loxodromic elements in SU21, then up to conjugacy, this pair of elements are determined by their traces, and they point on the cross ratio variety corresponding to these elements. So this essentially gives you a family of parameters that determines your pair of elements up to conjugacy. So this is more like the classical setup, but the only sort of, I would say, disadvantage is that it does not give you how the embedding looks like. But anyway, it gives quite a lot of information. And this result actually was the starting point of our investigation because we wanted to generalize this result for SU31. But till date, we have only got partial generalization. So before stating the partial generalization, let me define some technical term. So a pair AB of loxodromic elements in SU31 is called non-singular if, what happened? If these loxodromics do not have a common fixed point and the fixed points of A and B do not lie on a common two-dimensional total legeodesic subspace of the complex hyperbolic space. And the third con uh, second condition is a bit uh, more complicated, but it, it essentially says that the fixed point set of A is disjoint from, so given an element A in SU31, it has two eigenvectors whose lengths are positive. So the second condition says that the fixed point set of A is disjoint from at least one of those copies of uh, totally geodesic subspaces, those are orthogonal to these eigenvectors. And the same is true for B as well. So these two technical conditions are needed in order to prove this following theorem. It's a, in a joint work with C. Prasad. So this theorem states that, that you take any non-singular representation of F2 into SU31, then there exists two non-zero complex parameters, alpha i and beta j, such that along with these coefficients, the traces of the image under these representations and the point on the cross ratio variety completely determine the representation up to conjugacy. Now, these two conditions essentially, so what are alpha i's and beta j? They are the cross ratios, but, I mean, have you discussed cross ratio? No, not really? Okay, so, I mean, maybe if I have time, I can, I mean, so cross ratio essentially has been defined for four points. So on the boundary, you take four points, then the cross ratio is defi defined corresponding to four points by this formula. I mean, sorry, what is x4, x1, x3, x2, and 
What is what is the net X two X four, right? And I hope I am I am correct in defining the cross ratios. Am I or what? Whatever. So I mean, it is essentially, you take the take four null vectors and take this uh, fraction of inner products. So that defines the cross ratio. Now, Parker and Plattis, they, and more generally recently Plattis, they have proved that uh, this cross ratio actually change if you permute these four vectors. So up to permutation, there will be three cross ratios remaining, and they determine a affine space in the, and that's called the cross ratio variety. Now, here alpha I and beta j are the cross ratios, but instead of four null vectors, you replace one of the null vectors by positive eigenvectors. So the same definition goes through, but the point here is that when you replace these four vectors, uh, four null vectors by a positive vector, then this may not be well defined. And even if it is well defined, it may be zero. So just to make, just to ensure that this term is non-zero for at least one alpha i and one beta j, we have to impose these two conditions. So the theorem says that under these two conditions, you will always get at least one non-zero alpha i and one non-zero beta i, such that they, along with traces and one point on the cross ratio variety, will completely determine the non-singular representations. So this is a partial generalization of the result by Parker and Plattis, but I mean, it gives something, but uh, the general case, I mean, I don't know how to do that in this setting. So that's why we need to look into the geometric invariant theoretic approach in order to understand the general case. Now, the starting point, as in the work of Lawton, is to classify the polystable representations of a free group of two generators into SL4C. Now, in this case, there has been already some work by, the, by Drensky and Sadikova and also Djokovic. So now I give here two tables. So in these tables, we have listed the traces according to their word length. So this is one table, which we called G1. And there is one more table that is called G2. So we have these 10 families of traces corresponding to several word lengths. So as you can see, I mean, this is quite symmetric set of generators. And the theorem of Drensky and Sadikova and also Djokovic, uh, here we have essentially used the Djokovic list. Drensky and Sadikova has slightly different list in this setup. So this says that G1 union G2 gives you a minimal system of 32 generators for the I mean, for an element in the character variety when the target group is SL4C. Now here, G1 is a system of, maxim, a system of maximal algebraic parameter, parameters. That means none of these parameters in the table G1, they satisfy one polynomial equation. Nothing is known about how these parameters behave, and furthermore, no polynomial relation is known among these 32 parameters. Now, in our joint work, we could improve this number by two. So that means we have proved that G1 union G2 minus two elements gives you a minimal system of 30 generators uh, for the character variety. So this is our one of our result. So if you omit the traces of x to the power 4 and y to the power 4 in the previous tables, then the rest of the elements is a minimal system of 30 generators 
for the coordinate ring of the character variety. That means you take any polystable representation in this character variety, they are determined up to conjugacy by these 30 generators. And you can see x to the power 4 and y to the power 4 are in the first list. So, I mean, and so it should be 13. There should be a maximal set of 13 algebraically independent elements because we, have, we are omitting uh, 15, I think, let's count. So how many elements are there? So 2 plus, 2 plus 3 plus 4, so 5, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 14, uh, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 6 plus 4, 10, plus 3, plus 2. So 15, 17. So we have 17 traces here. And we are omitting x to the power 4 and y to the power 4. So what I have written is correct. We have a maximally, uh, we have a maximal set of 15 algebraically independent elements in this generating set. Yeah. So, yeah, so the relation, there is no relationship between G1 and G2. But the point is that the traces of G1, Drensky and Sarikova and Djokovic, they prove that it is a algebraically independent maximal subset of the generating set. So these are, so there is no polynomial relation among these uh, traces. But what are the relations between these traces or if you take the generating set as a whole, that is not known. So what we know only here? Yeah. Minimal means they are not, I mean, there cannot be any smaller maximally algebraic set. Yeah. I mean, if you take away any of these traces, then they will satisfy polynomial equation. That's what it means. So this is a, yeah. It's still minimal, yes. No, it's a maximal, sorry, it's a maximal set. It's not minimal. No, I am not saying minimal, right? It's a maximally algebraically set. No, no, maximal. Is it? Where? No, 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 no. There are two things here. So G1 union G2 is a minimal system of generators for the character variety. And G1 is a maximal algebraically independent set. So they are different thing. Yes, exactly. And we do not know what are the relations. What we could prove that we can take, we can remove two elements from the list of Djokovic and Sadikova, and we still have 15 algebraically independent sets. So we have improved the number by Djokovic and Drensky and Sadikova by two. But we do not know what are the relationship between them. We have no idea. So now, essentially we have used this lemma to prove the result. So you take a generating set for the coordinate ring, and suppose trace of u x cube v is in the generating set. So, so you start with the characteristic polynomial, and then you multiply the characteristic polynomial on the left by a word u, and on the right by x inverse v. And then that gives you this polynomial equation. So that means if you take traces of this latter equation, you can see that this remains a generating set as long as 
the rest of the traces are in the subring generated by G uh, with this trace omitted. So this is a small technical lemma that we have used in our uh, proving this result. And this is the kind of technique that has also been used by Lawton. I mean, this is a, there is a normal geometric invariant theoretic technique called partial polarization. So this is essentially uh, sort of that technique that has been used in a more smaller uh, scale. Now, you take an involutive outer automorphism that permutes x and y. So that means that maps x onto y and y onto x. And let, there is another involutive automorphism that maps x to its inverse. So these two maps are in the coordinate ring of the character variety. And what, as a corollary to the previous result, we get a more symmetric set of 30 generators, which is minimal. Here, S is this set. So you see, here we could get rid of the generators which correspond to words of length 10. In G1 union G2, we have elements up to word length 10. But here, we have reduced it to traces of elements up to word length 9. OK. So now, build up on this result. Uh, this result is needed in order to give the minimal set of generators for SU31. So as a consequence of this corollary, what we have obtained is the following. So you take the following 22 traces. Then these 22 traces determine any polystable pair up to conjugacy. So here in this list, you can see I mean, there are trace x, trace y, x square, x y, y square, x inverse y. These are all word length of 2. Then you have traces of corresponding to word length 3, x y square, y x square. And then word length 4, x square, y square, x y, x y, x inverse, y inverse, x y. And then 5. Then this bunch is the majority corresponding to word length 6. And then you have two, word, two uh, traces corresponding to word length 7. So total 22 traces. And the theorem says that these 22 traces determine any polystable representation or a, from the free group into SL4C, or equivalently, any polystable pair. So I think that's it. <laughs>